I'm out in the forest today, getting a bit of fresh air after the uh, Christmas festivities and overeating of the last few days. And uh, despite all the COVID-19 stuff and not being able to see very many people, we have my, my dad, who's 93, to stay for the day on Christmas Day. We had a lovely spread and we've been eating the food for the last few days. Uh, but it's starting to feel like normality must reign at some point. So I'm out in the forest today grabbing a bit of fresh air, just getting used to being outside again because I haven't been outside much for three or four days. And um, thought it'd be a good time to gather some jelly ear mushrooms. It's um, just above freezing out here and um, it's the perfect time of year for them really. It's been very moist, it's not really too cold and I'm expecting to find some very, very large ones. I've just taken a few stills, actually, of a few big ones, including one that's incredibly ear-like, which is always very satisfying. Um, this mushroom, which I'm going to show you in a second, has medicinal benefit. Um, it's used in traditional Chinese medicine as a soothing, cooling, mucilaginous agent. So very good for ulcerated tissue, maybe stomach ulcer, something like that. And um, in Western European traditional herbal medicine, we used to use it boiled in vinegar to treat peritonsillar abscess, um, or quinsy, as it's also known, which can be a serious condition. And, uh, you know, it can close, close the airway of the throat in extreme examples. But juice ear or jelly ear or wood ear, these are the names you'll most often hear it called, is a very good edible mushroom. It hasn't got, pack, you know, it's not packed with flavour. Um, it's got great texture, and when it's shredded up very finely and then dried as shreds, you can toss it into stir fries and sort of East Asian dishes and things like that, and it's very, very good. It's also cultivated widely in Southeast Asia um, and used all over that part of the world regularly in cooking. It's a very interesting fungus, though, because it also contains a lot of fungal melanin. And this was the fungus that was used um, in experimentation on mice after the Chernobyl incident, where they discovered that lots of the fungi growing near to the nuclear reactor and around the derelict buildings were all very dark in colour. Fungal melanin is slightly molecularly different to the melanin that our own cells produce, but only very slightly. And whereas melanin is produced in our own cells to protect them from ultraviolet radiation, the fungi have evolved to protect themselves from gamma radiation and X-rays, a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but it's all just light really. And they do this by a process called Compton scattering, where they absorb gamma energy photons and it causes the uh, electron cloud around the melanin molecule to become excited. The electrons go up a quantum level, buzz around a bit more, a bit more widely, and then once they drop down, into lower uh, quantum shell positions, they re-radiate or give off the energy once again, but as light of a different frequency, in this case infrared. So they turn gamma rays into infrared radiation. And that's pretty fascinating. So recently, uh, you know, fungal melanin, or rather in the form of a, a one of the black molds, f fungi that produce melanin were taken up onto the International Space Station to see if they would you know, see how, how they would cope in space and, and limit their applications here for spacesuits, for astronauts, also military applications for, you know, for radiation protective suits because previously it take, took several feet of lead to stop gamma rays and it turns that this is uh, one of nature's own smart materials that stops gamma radiation in incredibly thin layers. So all of that's really interesting. But let's take a look at the mushroom itself and uh, maybe look at some of its properties and discuss how we can use it as food. Here we go. Now wood ear starts its life, or rather really it starts its fruiting as tiny little jelly-like blobs like this on the branches usually of elder trees. It's almost exclusive to elder trees uh, in this part of the world anyway, Sambucus nigra. But Actually, it does grow on other trees, and I have even found it on, um, you know, fallen conifer branches and things. Very, very rarely, though, it is almost exclusive to elder. So they start off small like this. There are a few larger ones on this uh, fallen elder tree. There you go. So they're hanging down from the branch like this underneath the branch of a tree that's fallen over. Here we go, I've just come underneath and I'm coming up the other side of the same log and there's a nice little cluster of them here. You can uh, you sort of start to see why they're called ears because you can see all the kind of 
various different ridges that you'd see inside an ear. They are kind of ear shaped. I've got one that I'll show you in a second that's incredibly ear shaped. So I'm going to, uh, that one's got a big hole in it, but I'm feeling it and it feels solid. It's not sort of delaminating or coming apart. It doesn't feel slimy. So uh, those are good. That one doesn't feel so good, so we'll pop that one up here, just to my CD8. We'll perhaps shed a few spores, that's a nice thick one. Nice firm one. Something you should know about this mushroom is that if you try to just fry it as it is, like this, okay, then um, it's actually got two tough outer membranes, one on each side, and they fill up with the jelly in the middle which turns to steam. It's got a lot of water in it. It turns into a great big tough bubble of gas in the frying pan which explodes making a loud pop usually and a whiz sound. It goes flying across the room, sometimes sticks to the ceiling, sticks to the walls and if you're not careful spatters your face in hot fat. So that is not the way to cook jelly ear mushrooms. You really should shred them up dry them and toss them into a stir fry or you can use them in casseroles and stews as well. Um, one nice little touch is to take whole dried ones and rehydrate them in a nice liqueur, something like a Kirsch, you know, cherry brandy or perhaps slow gin and, um, and then dip them into molten dark chocolate and when it dries uh, becomes brittle and tempered on the surface they are the most gorgeous sort of mushroom alcohol jelly liqueur sweets. So as I say, names, wood ear, jelly ear, jew's ear. Now jew's ear is quite interesting um, and it comes from the French originally. It was supposed to be Judas ear, uh, the ear of Judas Iscariot, who in medieval folklore was said to have been hung on an elder tree and these are supposed to be his ears popping out of the tree. So the light's really going, folks. I'm going to show you the rest of this in the form of some still photos because I've got some very nice still photos. And uh, as you can see, I'm out in some uh, native broadleaf woodland. I've got silver birch in front of me. I've got some holly. Um, I've got some uh, beech around me and some oak. And um, I was actually rather hoping to find the olive oysterling maybe on beech today, but I haven't seen that so far. Uh, so I'll carry on picking some, um, some jelly ears as the light fades and I'll show you the rest in the form of some still photos. Nice to speak to you all again and I hope we can catch up soon. Bye.